So Ideas on Tap is an opportunity to talk about something that is on people's minds and do it in a fun setting, um, really creating a conversation and a dialogue between expert panelists and the audience. This is the first of four. Right, the other ones will be around, and these are some pretty heady topics, but they're fun. What's the interrelationship between artificial intelligence, technology, and the humanities? The other topics we'll be focused on is the impact of income and wealth inequality and what it means for democracy in the state of New Hampshire. We'll be hosting that in Portsmouth. And then lastly, we've been thinking about, and we've been asked to focus on this issue around criminal justice reform. To truly understand what fake news is, I think you have to understand what real news is. Real news is information that is produced to educate, inform, and reflect a reality so that a public can know enough to take and improve their own lives in a democratic society through voting intelligently. Now, news is not to any purpose other than to the benefit of society. Therefore, fake news is anything that isn't that. And in particular, I would define as something what is actually designed not to benefit to society, but to benefit a small group of individuals or a particular ideology. I think that uh, new technology and social media has made it both easier for fake news to spread as well as made it easier for people to create fake news and get it out there because there are more avenues for distribution. I think the whole concept of the fact that the press has, has gotten off track is, is not necessarily a novel one. If you look at partisanship over history, we're not really in a new place. It just seems new, I think, to us because of the proliferation of social media and we have so many outlets and there's so much information that's being bombarded at us constantly that it's almost hard to process. context of fake news when I was growing up was largely propaganda by um, the Soviet state or um, Nazi propaganda during World War II, which were designed for the very purpose that a lot of false stories are designed today, that is to create an animus against a particular group or to control a, a particular group. I started reading a little bit more from uh, what cognitive uh, scientists have to say, what evolutionary psychologists and biologists have to say about how we think and how our brains develop to think. And what they're pretty much saying is that this idea that our brain is there to solve logical things and to come up with good reasoning to find solutions, which was what we've always thought the brains are for, that's not what they're for. They're starting to believe now what our brain is for is to come up with really good stories and to follow really good stories, truthful or otherwise, but stories that help us fit in with our own social group. I think that telling whether something is true or not actually takes a lot of work. Um, it can be hard to look at something and really evaluate what the bias is there. But I guess the thing that I would say is you should always uh, don't take everything that you read at face value. Ask questions about it. Like, what, what does this person have at stake by telling me this story? Who is telling me this story? Are there other sources that corroborate this? Or am I seeing conflicting views and other sources? So I would say read widely and read deeply. 